faint out your trust. The fuck? Yeah. The hell? Uh, long story, but it could be part of the interview if you want. The hell, man. <laughs> You just cleaned out your truck, like like literally walking away, drawing the keys and all that stuff, man. Like that. I'm going. I'm going to another company. Yeah, what's going on, everybody? Lockout men in the building once again i am your humble host lockout man and welcome to the lockout man podcast show that is it welcome to the lom community y'all in here y'all doing the behind the scenes seeing me what's up you know what i'm saying i don't know how to feel about today today is just a mesh day you know like it's like a month day you know what i'm saying but it begins it's it's a little bit better though it's a little bit better because right now i'm on the phone with another interview for you guys yes sir i am uh about to talk to this young lady but before i do but before i do don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell and that all button so when i pop on i pop on and y'all got me that's what's up that's what's up of course this is being simulcast live because the lom community is joining us tonight so if you guys want to hook a brother up with some coffee or something to drink it really doesn't matter at this point because i'm thirsty for anything well not just anything i'm just saying you can hook me up in the cash app or the coffee app which is in the description and um and yeah just get at your boy get at your boy right now i would like to bring this young lady to the fold so that we can get in this conversation right quick she turned her keys in like literally today she's not getting out of the she's listen she's not she says she's not getting out of the business she's not getting out of the business but unfortunately the company that she's was with uh, I don't know. We're going to get into a. We're going to delve into a little bit of that. I would like to bring to the show Tammy Turner to the show. Hello, hello, hello. What's going on, Tammy Turner? Say what's up to the LOM community. We got in the building in Y2 Japan and Mom Dudes Love Watching. Hello to everyone in the LLM community. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. How are you this evening? Ah, oh, I'm blessed. Either way, um, even on a bad day, I'm still blessed. I'm living and breathing. That's all that really matters at the end of the day. That's, you know what? I mean, it it is a blessful thing to to get up in the morning have all your limbs, being healthy, you know, I like that. But it's also sad at the same time that, again, my man Chadwick Boltzmann, uh, the Black Panther, has passed. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And I, I'm, I'm still shocked. A true to, hero. Yeah. I, A I'm, true hero. I am still shocked of of that. Um. His passing was was uh, this this past weekend. So, how did you feel about it when 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 you found out about it? I I was devastated to be honest because um, then it, it, he went through all of that and nobody like he has a great team like nobody leaked any of his information. Nobody knew until he passed. And that's and, and like I said, that right there says he's a he's a hero to me. He didn't he didn't want anybody's sympathy. He didn't, and he went through making movies while he was battling cancer. His cancer. I, I believe it or not, I man, I I'm still flabbergasted that he that he did all of the you know he did all the movies. I mean you know forty three. 
both three event well three marvel movies the avengers the uh the uh infinity war uh in game and uh the one that brought him in which was uh winter soldier wow you know i mean the man went right. the man went hard and didn't want nobody to know that's that's keeping business as i said before to the chest mm -hmm. like not not to say it's nobody's business because everybody wants to be in in whatever their favorite celebrity's business is. You know what I'm saying? But he was like, look, I just want you to enjoy what I put out there. I don't want you to feel any kind of way by me putting putting out there that I'm sick and I'm battling cancer. That's that's what's yes. up. That's what's up. So I, like I, I said, believe, yeah, I believe he's such a great actor. Um, he could have, he could have surpassed Denzel, Sidney Poitier. He could have, he could have surpassed all of them. But he was a very strong and powerful individual. You mentioned my other guy, Denzel Washington. That's that's my guy. I, I, I except for I love him. <laughs> it's, except for it, it's not too many movies that I can honestly say that I haven't seen of Denzel Washington. I mean, I, this I mean Denzel Washington plays like diverse characters. Like, I mean, if you could put him in makeup, he could he he could probably play a Caucasian man if you let him. You know what I'm saying? But uh, oh yeah, but yeah, but yeah, him. Definitely. You know, Chadwick Boseman is in the is in the upper echelon of my of my favorite actors. You know what I'm saying? And there's not I, I don't have that many favorites. I I don't go around saying that you know this is my favorite actor. This is my favorite actor. But Denzel, Sidney Poitier, um, hell, I'm I'm gonna say uh the guy that uh. Uh, I forgot his. I forgot Sean Connery. You know what I'm saying. He's he's up there with oh, yeah. him. You know what I'm saying. Very Al Pacino, Al Pacino, um, uh, Robert, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what's what's his name? Uh, De Niro, Robert De Niro. You know what I'm saying. He's up there mm -hmm. with them. You know what I'm saying. So great, great yep. guy. I mean, All I, men of strength. I I don't know. I don't know him personally. I don't know him personally, and I only watched the movie. So, but you know, from just following him through his, you know, through what he did outside of, you know, outside of the movies too, which makes him a great humanitarian. So, so Tammy, let's start. Let's let's start with your story, man. You know what I'm saying? How how you uh how you got start. <laughs> How you got started in trucking and what's your journey so far? Um, well, I've always had an interest in traveling and um I I I've just uh, I was a nurse. I was an LPN for 20 years. And I got to where nursing was no longer enjoyable. I went to work, it was like stress. I hated to be there. I didn't really want to do that job. So I just started looking towards trucking, and I worked a lot of overtime shifts and uh, paid the cash, went out, uh, started my first trucking job with uh, CFI a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, I've been out here a year. Uh, I enjoy, thoroughly enjoy being on the road. I love it. Okay. I don't think, I tried local. I try. I, I tried local for a short period of time, and it was repetitive. I couldn't do it. I like the open road. Okay, okay, Tammy, Tammy, okay. But let's let's uh let's let's bring it back a little bit. You say you uh been out here for for only a year, and you was you right. was in the you you was in the healthcare industry. A lot of I I don't I, a lot of females that that works in the healthcare industry makes money though. I mean, that's one of the industries where 
oh, yeah. you know, that's one of the industries where the females want to jump into like right away. They they want to jump into healthcare. They want to jump into home care. A lot of females I talk to like, yo, what you know, what do you do? Oh, I'm a nurse or I'm a home health aide or you know what I'm saying? Where where okay. is the connection between that and trucking? <laughs> There's really no connection between the two. I can say, honestly, as an LPN, or, you know, some states call it an LBN, um, I make more in trucking than I did as a nurse. As an LPN, okay. um, Arian, uh, I'd probably be making about the same as what they did. And I went to school all of three weeks for, for trucking. And then I got trained for, you know, so many miles. How how long how long you went to school? Now, when for, I first. How, how long you went to school for nursing, though? I mean, you know, in trucking, we could get you, we could get you in and out in a trucking. A full year, a full year. But in nurse yeah. in in right. nursing, we, we can't get you in and out for nursing. Did you did that come out of Mm-mm. did that did uh did both of them your your nursing school and your trucking school did either one of those came out of pocket? Um, trucking school came out of pocket. How how did you uh? Trucking school came out of pocket. How did you do nursing? School? And it was thirty two hundred. Nursing school, I still pay some um, student loans for that. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Now, as far as uh, as far as uh, trucking, uh, trucking school, you just mentioned that you pay thirty two hundred. There, trucking school is expensive, though. I mean, just for just for three weeks of training to drive a truck is ridiculous. I mean, I pay fifty six hundred, but yeah. um. But uh, you paid thirty two. Mm-hmm. What, what trucking school you went to the, to to uh, get your license? Um, it's Crowder College in Neosho, Missouri. Oh, okay, okay. So you're from Missouri? Nope. Oh, okay. You just went to Missouri just I to did. go to school. Mm-hmm. I know a few other people that had went through there, and they suggested it, and it was cheaper than any one I found in my area. Right. And they house you. So All right, so how how, how how was how was that how was that experience uh looking for a trucking school all the way up until the one that you found? Um it's really not hard cuz trucking schools are everywhere. Um and it just depends on how you want to go the route you want to go. Do you want to pay for it? Do you want to submit yourself to a company for a year and they pay for it? Um, it just depends on how you want to go about it. So why didn't you, you know, being a being a female, why didn't you choose any of the any of the trucking company schools and be suggested to their contract for a year? I, you know, at my age now, you know, when I was younger and I got my nursing, I just, you know, did it. But at my age now, I was able to pay for it and come out of pocket and not have to be stuck in a situation where I might not like the company and then I'd have to stay or add more debt to myself Mm -hmm. trying to pay that company back. So I just paid it was cheaper paying than the company um, paying for it because the company made, was going to make me pay five thousand dollars. Mm. Now that was going to be that was going to be out of like they was going to take that out of your your checking account, and then they will probably reimburse you after you give them the year. Right? That's that's what you found out. No, no, they were not. Um, you just did a one year contract with them. If you worked that full year, they didn't um make you make a payment. Okay, okay. But if you didn't do but the if you, if you didn't do them, 
Yeah. Oh, then they would, uh, then yep. they would, uh, would, uh, hit they you would up. come after you. Mm-hmm. Mom Deuce right. Love. And it would uh, go against probably your credit. Mom Deuce Love just chimed in. She said, you have to be emotionally and physically connected in healthcare. In trucking, you don't, in trucking, you don't. Some females need disconnection from others, and trucking is an option. Do you, do you agree with that statement? I do agree with that statement. Now, I was not emotionally disconnected from my patients in any kind of way. My thing was with nursing, um, uh, it became more about politics. Everything was changing. Less time with the patient and more. You got to do more charting on this, more charting on that, more charting on this. And you have to have, and trust me, yes, you have to have all of that in order because if they come after you in a lawsuit, and your charting is not in order, you're in trouble. Mm. I haven't so th- I haven't it, it became of it that way. so it, it became so bad. Like you would have pharmacists call you and say, "Well, this patient's been taking this, and I've seen this actually happen. Mm-hmm. This patient has been taking this medicine for two years now. We need them to come off of this medicine, so you're going to have to call the doctor." So I call the doctor and I say, "Okay." They're taking this medicine for their psych. This is a mental health med. They change it, and this patient changes for the worse and never never changes back. Mm. I've seen it, and it's not good just because insurances and, and stuff, they all want their hands off in, in medical. If something is working, why do you have to change it? And it that's where my heart got involved, and I was like, I can't do this anymore. You know what? I, I'm I'm a type two diabetic, and insurance. I, I I think, in all honesty, and this is only my opinion, insurance fucked the whole healthcare system up, like literally. Yeah. Like my doctor, and I I experienced this. My doctor prescribed me, or, well, my my doctor prescribed me some medicine. The insurance said, no, we don't want him. We we don't want to give him that medicine. We want to give him this medicine. And I'm like, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, wait. So I turned around and I asked the I asked the pharmacist, I was like, well, how much is that medicine? They talk, what 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 well, they want to give you the generic. Nah, nah. nah do I look generic to you? I mean, that's how that's how these mm-hmm. that's how these insurance these these insurance looking at us like we're genetics the genetics that's the word I don't know I'm gonna use it though but uh generics like really <laughs> I got I I got I went to yeah I went to I had a I had a I had a doctor you know that wanted me to go to uh take an MRI because I had, you know, uh, my throat was bothering me last year for the better part of last year. And I didn't even know what was going on. I mean, I thought it was, I thought I had a cold, a, you know, sore throat and all like that. You know, you know, my one doctor had to put the, you know, camera down my throat. She saw some inconsistencies in there. So I had to go. Mm-hmm. She, she signed me up for MRI. The insurance called me. And said, well, we don't want him to take an MRI. We want him to take a, what do you call that when you go over, uh, over a pregnant woman's stomach? Uh, what do you call that? Uh, infrared? Ultrasound. Ultrasound. Yes, yes. They wanted me to. Uh-huh. Ultrasound. They, want, they wanted me to do an ultrasound. And I'm sitting there like, so I called my doctor back. I said, yo, they, they canceled the insurance canceled my my date to go for my MRI, and they want you to give me a a, a what do you call it a, a ultrasound. And the doctor was like, "No, no, no, no. We need an MRI." I'm like, "Man, you know." But right there, right there, the insurance companies. Fucked up this whole healthcare yes. system, and is is it going to get any better? And my my 
thing? No. No, it's not. And my thing is a lot of a lot of these patients, me including, mm -hmm. um, I pay good money for my insurance it, out of my check. Exactly. I pay for my insurance. So why do you get to dictate to me what kind of care I get? Exactly. Especially if I'm paying if I'm if I'm paying it's like it's it's like what they said. I mean, it's like what everybody says. You know, pay that insurance because you don't know when you're gonna need it. But then when you do Right. When you do need it, it's it's like a fucking hustle, tussle, bustle, did you know, to uh to get, you know, to get. And this is what not just healthcare, but insurance across the board, period. You know what I'm saying? Homeowners insurance are the fucking worst. I mean, my mom's uh yep. my mom's home, we we had we had insurance all throughout all throughout. Our roof back a couple of years ago had uh had some wind damage. So, of course, I called them. I said, yo, you know, roof damage, come. They came out here, and they was like, no, nah, we, your, your roof was, like, damaged, like, like, uh, like, regular damage. Like, you know, like, r regular rear and tear damage. I'm like, oh, okay. But it's still damaged, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So what are y'all telling me? Oh, well, we, you know, we're we're not going to we're not going to repair the roof or whatever. Uh, OK. And then a day later, my mom's get a letter saying, oh, yeah, we we're we going to kick you. You know, we're going to kick you off the off the policy. Like what? Yeah, because your house is old. What? <sighs> Crazy. Crazy. Yo, we got a little bit far up here. <laughs> um, overall, Tammy, overall, has it been relatively smooth, you know, within your first year? What are some of the struggles you came along the way in, in, in trucking? Um. Just in general, uh, no, it's not always been smooth. Um, I was working for, you know, CFI. I did team driving with a, a friend of mine. I love him to death. Um, we worked well together, but, you know, CFI was not really his thing. So he decided to move on, and I took a local job with CFI. Um, so that kind of broke up a little bit, and I went um, to doing split seat positions where I drove the night shift and someone else drove the day shift on the same truck. We shared, shared a truck. Um, and then COVID hit and sharing a truck with someone else. Uh, you have to have your Lysol, your hand sanitizer. You have to spray everything down, um, CB, everything in the truck. Um, it, it was just kind of crazy. And then I really did not like the repetitive driving from West Memphis, Arkansas to Prescott, Arkansas every night uh, and then back to the same spot every night. Let me stop you. Let me stop you. Let me let me stop you right there, Tammy. You now you saying you don't like local because mm -hmm. of, the, of the repetitiveness. But what do you but what do you say to the people that that right. That swears by being local. This, this is that's their end game. Like, like when they come into trucking, they got right, you know they they, they quote unquote to gotta home. go. Mm -hmm. They gotta go over the road, quote unquote. But their end game is to drive local. But you, but you're you you you're not liking local. What do you got to say about people that that swears by local? Well, that's the people that want to be home. They might have, you know, uh, some reason that they want to be home. Um, not everybody can handle, like like the young lady had said, you know, the separation. The, the, it, it is. 
because literally when you're out OTR or your team driving and you're always out on that road, your only social aid, socialization is at shipping and receiving, truck stops, and your phone. That is the hard part. And when you're the phone, that is the hard part because a lot of people like friends, uh, family members, out of sight, out of mind. You, you, they, they tend to uh, not keep track of you so much. Mm-hmm. That That's the only hard part that um, OPR is for me. Um, but I've always been a loner, so I've never really cared. I could I could pick up and move to a whole other city and not know somebody, and it was fine. All right, but you you I've always been that type of person. You was with uh and we're going to get a little bit more because, you know, you you're no you're no longer with CSI uh CFI, right? No, I left CFI. Well, hold on, mm-hmm. hold on, hold on, hold on. Um hold, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold, hold okay. On. Okay. Uh with CSI, <laughs> CFI, this was your first outing after getting your license, why did you, you know, you yes, already mentioned, yes. you already mentioned that you team drive. So was that the reason why you went with CFI because you, you, you know, you was team driving with, uh, with your co-driver? Um, no, no. Um, we didn't even know each other until the, you know, we got into orientation. Believe it or not, we did not know each other until we got into orientation, but we, we clicked and we were such friends during orientation and everything um, that we decided later on um, to team. Okay, wait wait a minute now. You, 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 you met this cat in orientation. Now, orientation only lasts yeah. three... The orientation only lasts three days. So, within that three-day period... Five Five for CFI. Oh, five, oh, five days with uh, CFI? Uh-huh, a whole week, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So within that five days, y'all, <laughs> y'all, y'all click like that? I mean, y'all, y'all click like that to, to say, hey, let's, let's well, jump in the truck together. We, all, we both had to go out for our training. Okay. All right. We both had to go out for our training, so it wasn't really just like within five days. We both had to go out for our training. Um, with women it, it, in trucking, it's a little bit harder to get a trainer because uh, me, I chose male or female trainer. I mm-hmm. didn't care, mm-hmm. um, you know. But most females, they want a female trainer, so that takes time to find a male that will take a female on their truck. Right. Because of the issues of sexual harassment exactly. or, you know, any any kind of issues that the two might have between each other. Mm-hmm. But I did have a male trainer. He was very nice, never disrespectful in any kind of way. Okay. Uh, he didn't treat me gently or anything. Whenever I did something wrong, he fussed at me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... We, you know, we both went through our training, and uh, you have to drive so many miles to train. Mm-hmm. Um, he got a truck before I did. He finished training way before I did. Okay. So we knew each other a little over a month. A little over a month. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Then after afterwards, who who called who to make the initial offer? You made the initial offer to him, or did did? He made the initial offer to you to come to come on and team with him. I made the initial offer to him. I was like, "Hey, I'm about to be testing out for a truck. Do you want to team?" Okay, we okay. could make more money teaming. Okay, and he was like, "Yeah, we can team." Okay, so we that's what we did, and we did do fairly well. No hank, no hanky panky between the two. No, none at all between us. We were strictly business. We were strictly business. That's what's up. That's that's what I want. You know what? Hold on right quick. Let, let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's what I want to hear. 
about the business. <laughs> That's what I want to hear about the business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what y'all too is coming in. But still some hanky panky could have went on because y'all knew each other a month now. Y'all did not jump in there and then try to, you know what I'm saying? At least y'all knew each other or knew of right, right. each other. And of course you said the male trainer that you right. had, that the male trainer that you had gave you the respect. Not that many trainers mm -hmm. give that respect. Hmm. I wonder, right. I wonder, I wonder right. why, Tammy. Tammy, why, why some of these trainers? Um, the, I think it is, you know, um, a lot of your trainers have been out here for a few years. Um, and I think that with, um, the, the big thing with them is the lack of socialization. You know, I mean, you're out here and um, you can say and do whatever you want to do. You can dress how you, you want to dress. You can do most anything in that truck. You're by yourself. So they become accustomed to just being their self and not really thinking about the next person. But some of some of the guys out there that do the training, they make training their job. That and some of them take it very seriously. But some of them just do it for the money. Exactly, exactly, and that's the and that's the problem. You mm -hmm. you need to you need to find the trainers that are going to train you and train you properly. You know, not not the ones that just. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you know, my paycheck ain't no good this week and yada, yada, yada. I, yeah, I've been through it. Been there, done that. Right. Been there, my, done that. I will tell you the very first thing, the very first thing that my trainer said to me, he said, I'm not going to be easy on you. And this is on the phone call. I hadn't even actually physically met my trainer yet. He had called me and said, hey, um, they gave me your number. I'm going to be your trainer. I was like, okay. He said, I want you to know um, this right up front. He said, you're my first female student on my truck. Mm. He said, I will not take it easy on you. I want you to know how to drive this truck because you're going to be driving out here with my family. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, and that was his exact word. Mm -hmm. All right. So why... You you mentioned that your 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 co driver left. Why did he leave? If you guys okay. was making yeah, this a you know if you guys was if you guys well of course you um, guys was you know, clicking. During... Y'all was clicking, right? The money was good. Oh, we're still friends. We're still friends. Oh, okay. The money was good. Why did he leave? Well, you know, it, like everybody else knows, that in trucking, um, there's a certain part of the year where it kind of slows down. Yep. And, and it, it slowed slow, down. It slowed down dramatically this year. COVID. <laughs> yep. And it slowed down. And he, yeah, he jumped out and he was like, yo, I'm not feeling this. My check is getting a little bit lower. Da, da, da. So he jumped off to another another place. But, you know, we had the conversation. I knew it was coming. And um, I applied to a local job thinking, you know, like most, most truck drivers think, you know, hey, I'm, I'm getting in this to get a local job. Right. But when I got local, I didn't like it. I didn't like that I didn't see my office views anymore. Mm-hmm. And, um, but we're still, um, we're still very good friends. We still talk. Um, he actually moved from Minneapolis to down in, in the Arkansas area. Um, okay. so, so is there going to be, yeah. uh, is there going to be, uh, is there going to be any, uh, hookups or is this is just, uh, this is just a, 
a, a friend. Oh, no, friend, we're just friends. Friend, friend. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, okay. We're just, just friends. Just friend, friend. Okay, okay. So he's he's going on to, you know, he's going on to greener pastures because CFI uh, just wasn't doing it for, uh, wasn't doing it for him. Um, how about you? Uh, you, you told me that you, uh, that you turned the keys in today. So what happened? Yeah, this was a whole nother company. This was a whole nother company that I turned the keys in. I had already turned in the keys to CFI back in April. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when I, when I went, when I, whenever I went solo, I, I drove solo for a couple of weeks and I was like, Ugh, this money ain't, ain't good. Um, I'm out here struggling to make some miles, but this is also in the beginning of the COVID time too. I was like, Ugh, I'm starting to not like this here. Um, applied to the local job, got it. And I was like, well, if I'm going to struggle for miles, I might as well get the set miles and, and um, make, you know, that little $700 check every week. Hmm. Um, and that's what it went to. And I was like, oh, yeah, I was like, oh, I can't do this. This is about the same that I was making as an LPN. Like, I got to go back to teaming or something. So, yeah, you, you said you had to friend make. Friend of mine. You he said, worked for. He, you, you said you had to make changes. So that that was changes. So what uh, what, yeah. cha what, what changes? Yeah. What, what was what was the what was the research out of all the companies out there? What makes <laughs> what makes this one the one? Uh, the one that I went, I left and went to. Yeah, the one that you that you going to now, because being that you left CFI, of course you did. I'm I'm assuming you did some more research, but with all of the oceans of oh, trucking companies that's oh, out there. Well, I left CFI in April. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What makes yeah? When I left CFI in April, no, I didn't do any research. I left to team drive with another friend that um, he had currently worked for that company, and he was going to leave his trucking company, and we were going to meet here and start at that company that he used to work for. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that's okay. That, so Which that is Mike Cross trucking. Okay, so that's where you at. Right now, you you going to the new company to team drive? That's where I just turned in the keys to. Oh, okay, no, okay. That's where I just turned in the keys to. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're not. So there's a there's a little piece of story missing. Okay, okay. <laughs> fill fill that in right quick if if you can. Okay, so while I was driving local, I was really complaining to my friends about the money drop and uh, you know that. I just really did not, I was not feeling this and everything. And he was like, well, I drive for J.B. Hunt. He said, but mm. I'll leave J.B. Hunt and I'll come back over to Mike Frost Trucking if you want a team because we will make good money. I was like, so what kind of money? So he showed me all of his old tech stuff. I was like, oh, okay. That's what's up. Um, so I gave CFI, a two-week notice, actually ended up being like a three-week notice, um, went over, mm -hmm. left at the end of April from CFI, drove to Dalton, Georgia, and started team driving with Mike Frost Trucking, which I love that trucking company. It's dedicated. You either drive to Washington or you drive to California. You take carpet up and out, and you bring fruit, fruit and vegetables back to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. It's dedicated. I mean, you're always doing pretty much the same thing, but I love that drive to Washington. So every other week, I was driving to Washington or California, which I love those long-haul views of the mountains. Mm -hmm. Loved it. We were making um, around two grand a week because we Each? were doing turn and burn. Each? We were turning and burning and... Each? Yeah, we were turning and burning <laughs> and just making it. Um, so we were making about two grand a week. Okay, okay. But then they put us on a flat rate. Uh, and when they put us on a flat rate, what? Wait, stop! What the hell is a they flat rate? Our pay. What? What? 
Right. No no mileage. They just put us on a flat rate. <laughs> what the hell is a yeah. flat rate? And like, he wasn't feeling it. I, I wouldn't feel that shit like, either. They paid us twelve fifty. They paid us twelve fifty. They paid us twelve fifty. Like twelve fifty and <laughs> like what? Like twelve fifty. Drive from Dalton, Georgia to Kent, Washington. <laughs> Wait, like twelve fifty an hour or 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 twelve fifty? No, twelve fifty for the load. Wait, one thousand two hundred dollars. So it was twenty five hundred. Yeah, that was a piece. Yes. So we what? dropped significantly right and he wasn't feeling it I, w- I wouldn't be feeling like that either notice. he was like I'm going back to J.B. Hunt yeah he said I'm going back to J.B. Hunt and I'm going to pull that Amazon load like I was before because I was making 16 a week so y'all y'all was making let me get this straight like, okay, let, cool. hold on now let me get this straight now because I'm scratching my head here Y'all was making two grand, yeah. and that was two grand take home or uh-huh. two grand gross. Yeah, a piece. Okay, so no, that was take home. So y'all was make so technically y'all was grossing more than. Wait, wait. Well, let me let me rewind. Was y'all ten ninety nine or was you W two? Ten ninety nine. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So that was so that was two grand a piece. To take home, and of course, you mm-hmm. have to do your own taxes and everything else, but still two grand a piece. Then from there, they dropped you down to 1200 1250 yeah, $1,250. Yeah. So let me see if you do well, my yeah. if you know, my taxes, I average about $300 in taxes, so that brings it down to like right. nine something. And then, uh, yep. uh, then after that, you know, your health, you got to pay that. So I say, I say maybe about another bill 50 that brings it down to like about $700. Yeah. What I was making running local. Yeah. Eey. And so we both decided, we, we both decided we was going to do a two week notice to the company. Mm hmm. No big deal. He was going back to J.B. Hunt. And I was about to take a a, a job with J.B. Hunt out of Arkansas. Okay. Um, But I got to the truck for our last load together. Yeah. I noticed his headset was gone. Um, Mm -hmm. So he pretty much. Everything was gone. He he. And I was like, he so left. I called him and I was like, yeah, he left. And I was, I called him and I was like, dude, where are you at? You're not coming for the load. He's like, no. He's like, um, I couldn't move my orientation date for Amazon. I'm in, I'm headed to Columbus. Okay. I was like, so when was you gonna tell me? He was like, <laughs> my bad. I'm like, really? <laughs> so <laughs> so I go like, into dispatch and I say, hey, my... <laughs> but a... you have to understand him. He's like really scattered. <laughs> he's really scattered all over the place. Like, <laughs> he say, I was he always say, reminding him everything. He say, he, he say, my, my bad. bad. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> so did you, yeah. so, so did you, you, you ran the final load? Yes, I ran the final load. Um, I took the final load from Tunnel Hills, um, Georgia mm-hmm. up to Boise, Idaho. Okay. Um, Left Boise, Idaho, picked up in Caldwell, Idaho. Drove down to, I got, I think I got down to uh, um, uh, Mountain Bow or, or something like that um, in Wyoming. Okay. Something, something, it, it's a rest area there. I spent the night there. And I drove 913 miles from that rest area to the outside of St. Louis. Where did you? I put it in that FMCSA emergency food act, and I rolled. Oh, all the way from okay, that's about what's four up. Four o'clock in the morning that morning till nine o'clock that night. So, I made nine hundred and thirteen miles. 
Was you? No, I was let like, me ask I'm you, getting this let, back, let, and I'm getting about this truck. <laughs> let me ask you this: Was you was you paid for the miles, or you just you just ran it just to turn the truck back in? I just ran it. I I'm I like to leave people understanding, and I'm the type of person. I am a very strong uh, person that I do unto others that they would have uh, that I would have, I would want to done done to me. Like I'm not gonna leave you stranded out in the middle of nowhere because I don't want that karma coming back to me. Well, okay. I believe what the energy you put into the world comes back to you. Okay. So I took the load. I did get paid a little extra for taking it solo. Yes, I did. Um, so th- that was, that was a little nice. That was, that was a little nice there. Let me, uh, um, let me, let me hold up, then, for, uh, hold, hold up for a second. Hold up for a second. Let me, uh, shout out to my man, uh-huh. Shane Bolton for the, uh, for the, uh, for the cash out brother, man. I appreciate the support, man. Thank you very much. All right, go ahead. Continue. Okay. So I, I, um, had about 656 miles left when I, when I set it down outside of St. Louis to get to Forest Park, Atlanta, to the big big market there um, that I usually deliver my fruits and vegetables to when I'm coming back. Mm-hmm. And I ended up doing um, some more PCing with the FMCSA, Emergency Food Act, mm-hmm. and I took those miles all the way down into Atlanta and got that truck up there that night to Tunnel Hill, back to Tunnel Hill. So, and that's when you uh, finally on turned Friday. That, mm-hmm. And that's when you finally turned your keys in, and you said done. Did anybody at the did, yes. did anybody yes. at the terminal try to try to uh, discourage you from leaving? Oh yes, um, it's a team driving company. Um, the owner um, he asked me if I wanted to stay on. He would find me a, a, another driver. Um, and I told him at that point that, you know, I had done so many turn and turns that I had not been home since April. I had not actually laid eyes in my home since April. And I said, um, no, nah. I, you know, I'm done. He said, well, if you ever, ever want another job here, you always have. Mm. That's what's up. That's I'm, what's up. I, I'm cool with that. I'm glad, you know. That's what's up. Tammy. But he, um, oh. it's, it's actually a good company. I won't complain about them, but they did, they did take down the money, but you know. Yeah, that, that, that. During the da- COVID times, I'm sure everybody, yeah. Yeah, everybody took the, a hit. Yeah, they're so. taking down, taking down that money. That was, that was a shit move right there, if you ask me. But if you feel that that company did right by you, which obviously they did, then, but of course you gotta you gotta watch out you gotta look out for self, man. And being that and and being you know looking mm-hmm. out for self, what what sets you apart from other drivers? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know because um, I don't really know a whole lot of other drivers. Uh, I guess I'm so new into the game. I haven't picked up the bad habits yet. So, <laughs> well, for you, you know, we all we all pick up bad habits along the way. Tammy, for your for your little time being, you know, for your little time in 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 trucking, being OTR, being a team driver, have you ever been in a situation where you felt vulnerable because you are female? Um. Not, not vulnerable. Um, like you asked about my first team driver, mm-hmm. was there any hanky panky? No, mm-hmm. but my second one there was. <laughs> hmm. um, but that was that was something that was something mutual before we even started team driving. So. Okay, that's what's up. Um, that's that's what's up. As long as long as you as long as you are all right uh, within any situations. What about what about this, Tammy? What extra precautions you take to protect yourself whenever you're in a certain area while shutting down? Um, well, I always carry carry my tire thumper. I always carry my tire thumper with me. 
um, if I'm outside of the truck, especially, and if I'm at a truck stop, I always, um, I've taken some self-defense um, classes and I always carry my key in between my fingers. As a, and it's like a punching method, you know, like you can you can do some damage with the key. Okay. Um, yeah, you can gouge somebody's eye out. I strongly a lot of the women drivers. Yeah, I strongly you can you can you can do some damage in a throat. <laughs> um, but I strongly suggest some of the women um, that are out here doing these OTR. The there was a recently a female driver on fifty nine in the Birmingham yep. area. Yep. And as a matter of fact, uh, let me as a, as, dead as, the truck. as a matter of fact, um, I got some um I got uh I I got I, I I just got it. I just got the information. It was just sent to me. Um I'm gonna mention a little bit about it, but I'm gonna bring it up tomorrow in tomorrow's interview because Orzel Johnson is coming back to the show and we're going to discuss it. We're going to discuss it a little more then, but they got a, they got a suspect that was charged. Unfortunately, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a black man. Y'all. I mean, um, yeah, that's un bad. Un unfortunately it was, a, it, it, it I was, hate, it was, it was a black man that, um, that uh, I, I I don't know what to say. I, I, I'm I am. Well, I hate that because um, I have biracial children. My my son is 25 and my daughter is 16. Um, I hate that 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 this the world is putting such a huge difference in our color of our skin. I wasn't raised that way. My parents are both married um, separately, but um, my mother's married to a black man. I, the black man is what raised me inside my home. Um, I am I am Caucasian. Uh, but I don't, yes, we are different, but we're not. We are all humans, and I wish that we could just change this whole situation. But it's, it's it, it, you know, it, I don't know how to change it, but I want to so badly. You know, we 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 just got to keep it moving the way we've been keeping it moving. Just keep positivity. Uh, just you know just be nice to one another and you know just treat each other the same way as you want to be treated you know what i'm saying tammy if you had to that's go the, if, that's my motto if you had to go back in time and start all over again would you would have got into a truck oh yeah much earlier i wouldn't even have went to nursing i'd, I'd, I'd be a 25 year veteran right now so if you wasn't, so if you wasn't, uh, if, if, if you couldn't get in the truck, what would have been a plan B? Um, I probably would have went to, um, cause I thought about either going into travel nursing or, you know, the trucking and, um, uh, trucking is what I, I chose, but I still have my nursing license. So. I can always, you know, if if trucking becomes an issue for me, then I can always go back. All right. But I probably do that with traveling. All right. Tammy Turner, everybody. Yo. Thank you. Yo, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, stopping by, chop it up with me. I really do appreciate that. Um, so what's next? What's what's next for Tammy Turner? Um, I'm just gonna keep on trucking. That's what's up. What what advice or tips that you got for the young girls or young females that's coming out into this game? What advice you got for them? 
be strong. Be strong. Um, you're gonna have those days where it's hard to back up. You're gonna be you're gonna be scared that you're gonna bump into things. It's okay. And there and at truck stops, you're gonna find people looking at you, watching you mess up. Don't worry about it. Get out, look, do what you gotta do to safely put your truck in that position or maneuver your truck into that lane wherever you whatever you're doing at that moment. Don't worry about what's around you other than the immediate surrounding around you. That's what's up. That's what's up. And that's one to grow on from first year trucker Tammy Turner. You know, your name sounds so close to Timmy Turner. I was about to call you that many a times from the fair, uh, from the fairly odd parents. I'm like, wait a minute. Her name is Tammy, damn it. And right, if, right. And if you guys like to come on and chop it up with me, just like Tammy Turner, you can do that. You can hit me up in the Gmail. That's LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com. Or come over to Instagram and hit me up over there. Make sure you subscribe. If you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share. Hit that bell and that all button so that you can get the goodness. And if you like me and like to support the channel, you can hit me up in the Cash App or the or the coffee app shout out to shane bolton for the uh cash app today i appreciate tammy turner for coming on and chopping it up with us i appreciate everybody in the lom community let me shout you out shane bolton wise Isle, chicago bbw carl keebler uh deep nitty let's see mom deuce love and new york to japan Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, and on that note, me and uh, Miss Tammy Turner, we about to get on up out of here. Until next time, everybody, I will give, come back at you with another video. Peace. Tammy? Thank you. Thank you so much.